Hello everyone, this is Andrew from Crown Academy of English. Today's lesson, you are going to learn five English expressions that mean to annoy someone. So, to annoy someone. This means to make someone angry. Example. Jane annoys me because she smokes in the office. Okay, so this means that Jane um, makes me angry because she smokes in the office. Okay, so to annoy someone. And in this lesson today, you will learn five new expressions that also mean annoy someone. Okay, so expression one. To drive someone mad or to drive someone crazy. So this means to annoy someone so much that they become mad or crazy. Okay, so obviously this is not a literal expression. We are not literally becoming mad or crazy, but it is a figurative expression. Okay, we are just very angry. Example. Jane asks, did Mark call you yesterday? And Sarah replies, no, he never calls me. He drives me mad. He drives me mad. Okay, so this means that um, Mark... Um, makes her very angry because he never calls her, okay? So drive here, obviously we are not describing driving a car. No, drive in this context, it means um, to make you feel something, to make you feel mad in this example, okay? Another example, the manager says, you are late every day. You're driving me crazy. You're driving me crazy. Okay, so both expressions, they obviously mean the same thing. This is quite informal. Okay, it's quite informal. It's not rude, um, but it is spoken English, spoken English. Expression two. To wind someone up. To wind someone up. Notice the, um, the pronunciation. We do not say wind. This is a verb and we say wind. Wind. And again, this means to annoy someone or to make someone angry. This is, this is informal as well. This is informal. Example, Jane asks, do you like Claire? And Sarah replies, no, she's rude. She winds me up. She winds me up. So she makes me angry. Okay. So again, this is spoken English. This is informal spoken English. It's not rude. It's not vulgar, but it is quite informal. So, David is angry with Mark during a meeting. So, David is angry with Mark during a meeting. So, we can say, Mark is winding David up. Mark is winding David up. Mark is making David angry. That's what this means. Okay? It's a very, very common expression, particularly in British English. Expression three. To drive someone up the wall. To drive someone up the wall. So obviously this is not a literal expression. And again, it means 
to annoy someone. And again, it is an informal expression, often used in spoken English. Jane is always playing video games. She drives us up the wall. Okay, so she annoys us because she's always playing video games. She's always concentrated and concentrating on her video games. She drives us up the wall. Okay, so she annoys us. Jane asks, does Mark help you with the housework? And Sarah replies, no, never. He drives me up the wall. He drives me up the wall. So he annoys me because he doesn't help me with the housework. Okay, so again, this is informal English. Expression four. To be a pain in the neck. To be a pain in the neck. So this is like, this is acting as an adjective. Okay, pain in the neck. And it follows the verb to be. So it's the verb to be followed by pain in the neck. And if someone is a pain in the neck, then the person is annoying to other people. So the person who is a, a pain in the neck annoys other people. Example. My neighbour makes a lot of noise. He's a pain in the neck. He's a pain in the neck. So he's, so apostrophe S, this is the contracted form of the verb to be. So he is a pain in the neck. So he annoys us. He is annoying to other people. So it's another way of saying, yes, he, he, um, he annoys us. Another example, he is always on the phone. He's a pain in the neck. Okay, so he's always making telephone calls. He's always speaking to people on the phone. So he's annoying. He's annoying to us. He annoys us. He's a pain in the neck. Notice this expression. This is very important. If someone is always using the telephone, someone is always calling people with the telephone, then we use the preposition on to be on the phone. Okay, so it means to always use the phone. So he's always on the phone. He's a pain in the neck. So you can see she's angry. And finally, expression five, a very, very common expression in English. To get on someone's nerves. This is an excellent expression and you will hear it all the time. And again, this means to annoy someone. This is probably the most common version. She told me to be quiet. She got on my nerves. So notice here we are using the past simple. She told me. This is the past simple of tell. So we're talking about something in the past. She told me to be quiet. She got on my nerves. So got is the past simple form of get. So this is the past form. She got on my nerves. She annoyed me. Okay. Example two. My boss shouts at me. He gets on my nerves. So this time we are describing something using the present simple to describe a regular action or a habit. My boss shouts at me. 
so this is also in the present simple. He gets on my nerves. He annoys me because he shouts at me. Okay, so this is a very, very good expression. You will hear this all the time in England or in America or anywhere where they speak English. This is the most, probably the most common way to say annoy someone. Okay, there we are. That's the end. Hope you enjoyed it. Tell me in the comments which video, uh, sorry, which expression you like the most. And here are some other lessons.